everyone. Good afternoon. How are you guys? So welcome to the Digital Beer Stream. This is the last episode of the Sour Week. So our fifth week. Thanks a lot for everyone that's been watching so far. It's great to have you here. I hope you like my t-shirt one more time. And it's really uh, makes sense for what I'm doing in here. And this is the sixth stream, like every Friday. And on the Friday, we are having our 30 minutes Fridays in-depth background of a beer style with a beer expert. And when I say beer expert, um, I mean someone that know what they're talking about, um, you know, about the style, about best representation, or even a bit of the background in general. And, you know, um, to celebrate this, I'm gonna have this fantastic beer. So, Tilking Girls, and it's a fantastic beer because it's made by one of the few, if not the only, uh, blender of lambics in Belgium. So let me just open it for a second. And I want to celebrate as well um, the bottle shop for the week, Caps and Taps in Kentish Town, North London. They've been really great. They have a great selection. This is the logo if you're looking for it. So Caps and Taps, check it out, see how we're doing. And I would love to tell you that we're gonna talk about sour beers today and we're gonna do it with someone that is like a hero, is a friend and is a fantastic human being. So give me one second and I'm trying to see if I can get in. You see now the invitation. So Alex is a colleague. She's coming from uh, Eastern Victoria in Australia. She moved to New Zealand um, for a year and then she get, come to, came to London uh, for six years now and I know her, she have a very, very extensive background in the hospitality industry, uh, different areas like, um... hello. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> of course I couldn't join. <laughs> well, what, what's, what's wrong? It's fantastic, <sighs> you, you're great. How are you, how you doing? I'm good, Gabs. I'm very tired, I'm very hungover. You said that you had an intense week, right? Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been working a lot. I know, I know. All right, there we go. Well, so it's great to see you because I haven't seen you in two months and it's like, what? What's going on in here? I know, I haven't seen you for ages. I know. And I know you're doing, you're going pretty busy like every day uh, at work, right? Yeah, we, I'm in five days, uh, and yeah, Telf as well now, actually. So we were alternating at the start, and we're, we're quite busy, so it's good. Yeah, got a lot of, um, oh, you've got fancy stuff. I left my beer at work. <laughs> All right, drink whatever you can. I really wanted to get with this because I haven't uh, you know, drink in a while, and I'm expecting to have um, enough funk and enough, you know, um, fruity characters are from this beer which i didn't know they are just like um a blendery and not just a brewery at all mm. which is great um alex um to the people that don't know you super well as i do um you're the brewer one of the brewers are london fields and you have a visceral love for funk and sour beers right i do i'm by no means any expert like i it's uh i think you you up talk to me quite a lot <laughs> no you are no 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 let, well, maybe, let me put it this way i'm a very big beer enthusiast that have like uh like all my jobs i've um i've turned my hobbies into careers i guess <laughs> so yeah i like i like beer and i think there's a certain amount of um i don't know you can be quite you know, you can regurgitate a lot of information that you that you read and everything, but actually putting it into practice is where you learn. So, I wanted to uh, I wanted to make beer like commercially because you know instead of doing it in the backyard. <laughs> I know you want to conquer the world as well one day, so that's why you're trying to get as many different skill sets you can. Conquer the world? No, I just wanna I just wanna um, I wanna be able to help help a few people. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's our. Uh, it, it, it's, it's beautiful that you're capable, you know, to jump from, um, you know, a, a role within the industry to another one, because when you're dealing with, uh, you know, with curiosity, with styles, with questions in general, I like to think that you have a wider, uh, you know, point of view than um, maybe just, just a brewer or just, uh, you know, um, a writer or something like that. And 
that's that's all I'm looking for, like a wider point of view to um, understand why we're spending money to buy this. And my question is, why are we spending money to buy this, in your opinion? For that particular beer? I, I, should, um, I should actually just start with um, saying hello, and my name is Alex, and cheers. cheers. And um, I know it's a big day, a big weekend for uh, people in Europe and the UK specifically, it's VE Day, which um, I actually had to ask friends about because it's not, it's not particularly, like, I've never really celebrated it in, um, in Australia. We commemorate uh, people who have given their, uh, people who have given their lives for their country and in wars and everything like that. So we commemorate that on Anzac Day and the day of remembrance. And um, we, like Australia was still fighting a war in, a, in the Pacific. So that's why it's not like, for me, it's not a really big thing, but I, yeah, it's quite big. So uh, cheers to all the- Cheers one more time, 100%. And you know, I, 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 it, it's, for me, it's like, for me, it's like, um, I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can in 30 minutes because right. okay. I'm like, ah, you know, this is, this is the reaction, but, Okay, it's going to so, be longer than 30. It's going to be longer than 30 minutes. Has <laughs> so, been with Moritz, it will be you. For people that don't know me, uh, my name is Alex. I'm from Australia. I have worked in the hospitality industry for uh, a very long time. My, um, my, uh, the profile that Gabs wrote, that you wrote, was, uh, was very elaborate and made me sound a lot better than I am. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I... I've come from a chef background. I was a chef in Melbourne for almost five years. And then I worked in bars after that, was a bar manager at um, a place in Federation Square. Uh, I worked at a few different other places and then um, in New Zealand as well. And then came to the UK. I was uh, still a chef and I got back into home brewing and uh, like, yeah, I just, I really like cooking and all of it. So I, uh, yeah, I, just, I decided like I was doing sales, which was the, the most kind of weird thing for me because I've always been in like the, the server side or production side. And, um, and yeah, I, I was like, I hounded Telfrin for a job basically. So yeah, that's what brought me into this, this role at London Fields. So. Oh, well, and, and then you also told me that one day you would love to open a brewery. So it's a great place to be. Yeah. Um, you're working already with people that you met in the past. So mm -hmm. um, you, could, you could also help people like me because we are also colleagues to try to, you know, um, get the best out of what's going on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know, uh, I think um, some of the best beer chats I ever had and some of the best chats in general I had it with you. So it felt very natural to me, you know, just being like, uh, let's let's meet each other even in this weird platform and try to you know um, entertain with beautiful beer chats uh, be, 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 all the beautiful people that was the idea yeah. and when you see Chow that's my mom yeah oh Chow yeah. <laughs> it's really weird to, like so obviously this is my first Instagram live I couldn't even log in um, and yeah so like just seeing the the notifications come up it's like Oh, where do I look? It's really just... <laughs> well, you yeah. spend a bit, but then, but then it starts because you know, um, uh, I was I was chatting before um, with someone, and 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 the person was asking me, um, it's great for people that are not necessarily be people to understand them. The be people are people, just like you know, normal. And this is like actually one of my favorite things. I don't like talking to you know the really big, geeky, like nerdy, like I do, I do like learning from them, but like, I, I like the best, the best feeling for me is when people, you know, they're like, oh, I don't like beer. And I'm like, you've, you've probably had one kind of beer. Like there's a whole spectrum. And of course you make me talk about uh, the biggest spectrum of them all, the wild and mixed fer like fermentation ones. <laughs> oh, well, you know, we, 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 all I want to know is like, you know, things like if you are, you know, with people that know beer, uh, in terms of, or they making it, or they have a bigger relationship with it, uh, or anything. It's like, why you have an interest, bigger interest on wild or you know uh, different fermented beverages? What's the point? Why? 
me personally like why not uh, yeah. i love i love like there's a few particular beers i've actually got some stunt beers behind me that are not really on brand at all i'm sorry um uh i forgot everything and it's been a long week but um we we have a sabre sour from the brewery we're also brewing the rebrewing the sisters alcohol free so it's a passion fruit sour so it's really nice um but yeah the like the best the why people kind of spend uh, spend money on them because it's it's aged like these beers half of these beers are made by like naturally or like in you know it's just in a similar way that champagne is made so you've got like the grain and they're blended and they're aged and like fermented over like the space of 12 to 24 months, like up to three years sometimes, you know? So there's like, there's a whole, the reason why people spend money on these things is because they, if they know, like there's education will always be the best, like the best thing for me because not that I am in any position to teach people, but just to sort of just enlighten people and just be like, you know, this is the difference between, you know, the one down at the corner shop or like you go to a, a brewery in Belgium or something. So there's a whole process. And once people know that, and, and it's about getting like their taste buds are like kind of used to it as well, because if you get like a straight up kettle sour and it's, it's an unfamiliar thing, if you've, got the perception of like a lager so you've got to sort of ease into it i guess but yeah really good um example is one of my favorite breweries it's probably my favorite uh the brewery and the brewery Taru is where they do the uh it's their sour like they're kind of the sour facility so they um yeah all all of these beers you kind of i like them personally i like funky flavors in wine as well um but yeah, when you taste it, you like, I remember drinking with Moritz, who was a guest of yours. Uh, and we had a Russian river with, uh, I think it was a Russian, ri Russian river, dark sour with black, uh, black currants in it. Mm -hmm. And we tasted it and it was like initially really sweet and full in your mouth. And then it just kind of like disappeared. And then it's like had this slow sour build up from the back of your mouth. And, and it was just like, it was just like a probably a three dimensional beer. It was just it was insane. It was lovely. I so. remember we've been once at P Franco in Clapton, and it was a very happy night. And, yeah. and I loved the fact that I was trying food and I didn't have in a very long time. And we were having very very super fun wine. So you know I reckon almost that because you are doing you know uh, you put in your mouth you put in your taste buds in such a, not even pressure, it's more like um, you experience new things with them, then you also are more entitled to get closer to weird food, unusual food, more, yeah. you know, um, uh, interesting and exotic somehow as well. Do you think it's possible? I think anything's possible, Gabs. Um, but I think when you approach beer and food as flavor instead yep. of styles and instead of like the nerdiness just like I've, I've got a really good friend of mine that she can't like she was like oh I don't really know about beer I, I, I you know I'm not, I just drink lagers and stuff but she'll drink a beer I, I, she's tried like she's tried almost every beer that we've brewed and uh, you give it to her and she'll go oh it smells like pine and citrus and it's oh it's really tangy and like Ooh, the blueberries oh is there a lemon in this and it's 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 not it's not difficult it's just like kind of shutting your brain off and just enjoying like flavor and and, and then if you want and if you can you realize there is an entire you know process behind which is very very technical unusual spontaneous sometimes yeah so the mixed fermentation, there's uh, there's normally uh, lager, ales, and the mixed fermentation. So the mixed fermentations are uh, the, probably the most the most like um, well known is lactobacillus. So that's used to be kettle sours. So it's a bacteria that you get in Greek yogurt or like natural yogurt that's pot set, and it's really good flora for your stomach and everything. But uh, you. Yeah, you get to a certain, you get 
basically to a certain degree of, of sour, so to, at a lower pH. And then when you get to that stage that you're happy with or the, the desired like uh, taste, you can have like a really entry level or you can have a really tart one. Uh, and when you get to that, you boil it off and then you can uh, ferment it after. We're doing one where we're going to add about 80, 80 kilograms of passion fruit puree in it. So we've got another, like another layer of like, of sour going on, but yeah, uh, Lactobacillus, um, Pediococcus, there's Britannomyces, which is, I'll tell you about that, uh, um, breakfast uh, in Amsterdam, which I'm very, very gutted over, um, is was cancelled, but every year we make the pilgrimage over to Amsterdam uh, to celebrate uh, this, uh, it's a wild yeast, basically, so. So basically, you go in every year to a festival where you can taste and you can dig art on 100, 200, 300 su funky sour beers, something like that? Yeah, you get, um, you get, a, you get heartburn pretty quickly on the first day. <laughs> I'm sure. It's really good. It's, it's lovely. So there's a lot of like barrel aged beers. There's a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's kettle sours, there's a lot of funk and wild, like, yeast. It's a Carnival Britannomyces, if you want to follow it on, in, on Instagram. They host a lot of uh, a lot of really good brewers, like uh, Jeremy from the brewery was there last year. We attended his um, his tasting session. And, yeah, it's, it's really fun. And it's really nice. You get to, like, you get to sort of chill out, you know, kind of hang out with people and you get to learn about all this. There's a lot of crossover with like cheeses and bread and beer. It's just, wow. yeah. It's quality. Okay. Yeah. But, well, you know, like since I bought this book and I realized that there is a, not, so if, if to whoever, whoever really wants to get into. Do have uh, a book. <laughs> read um, this, this book is a really, really good read and it's like, it's a uh, yeah beer beyond the influence of brewer's yeast, and it's it talks about all the different areas in Belgium and uh, like it's just it's a really good it is really like passionately written as well. When you read it, you're like ooh, and it's 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 easy to read. It's not like it's not nerdy, but it's just like it's really that's a really good book if you want to um fantastic want to read anything kind of well uh, make sure then you passing over when when the apocalypse is gone, please. <laughs> Yes. And, you know, it's, it's another, another thing is like, it's, it's the, when I say the cult of bacteria or the cult of sour beers, I think is, as you said, for few reasons, that the people realize it's a special product because you're adding time on it, because yeah. you're adding random reactions somehow. I mean, brewers are the one in control, but with wild yeasts and spontaneous fermentation, you're not really super in control, right? Yeah, so that's not something I've had experience in is wild uh, fermented, like, apart from, you know, infected brews when I was home brewing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole spectrum of like the wild fermented beers that, that go on for like centuries as well. So uh, I'm not even going to try and be like, oh yes, I know about that. I don't like um, but the, the experience that we've had, is like for me, commercially brewing in the brewery is using lactobacillus. So we inoculate our, um, our, uh, our wort and then get it to a pH and then boil it off. And then that's when we move it, move it to the fun side, my side. So To, to whoever then just connect, uh, I'm here with Alex from London Fields and we're chatting about uh, very using uh, not super geeky uh, sour beer uh, background, especially our experiences. And talking about experiences, do you remember your first sour beer? First, you know first what? ever? I, I do. I was at uh, Gab's Fest in, in, uh, in Melbourne, and it's a really, it's a really well curated um, craft beer festival. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't like it actually. It was we had small shots and we were we were working our way through the 100, 120 taps or so, and uh, and we got to a sour one, but it was really pretty one dimensional. It was it was just straight up sour, and it was just there was no 
it was just like a raw sour and it, I don't I don't remember the brand or anything but I just remember going that's a bit much like that's just not um not what I'm about but I my properly when I was properly introduced to sours like uh was through the brewery like I I've drank sours before and I liked them but these were these were like just awesome and of course like the Cantillon and Lambics and and the likes uh but yeah these guys are in the Orange County <laughs> they're just like they have like it's just like a roller coaster in your mouth. It's like they have insane, insane beers. But one of my most favourite was the Tart of Darkness, and it's and if, yeah, um, I remember that. Reason varies, but they've they've started making it again. I know I'm 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 a fan girl of the brewery. I keep talking about it, but they are. Uh, yeah. I met the guys. Fantastic yeah. people as well. They're lovely. They're lovely, and they do like incredible beers. So you know. Yeah, someone uh, associates the, you know, the production or the creation of, of some of these, um, a closer art to, um, you know, almost like reconnect with the soil, reconnect with the matter, reconnect with the real craft in the way that we are considering. So definitely there is an interest, definitely there must be an interest in behind it, I'm sure. And uh, why do you think, some of these became popular like massively in the last five years in the way that we think commercially as well? Um, I think they're more, they've become more accessible, especially like they're, they're starting to be like available. They used to, I'm not sure. Like I haven't, I've only lived here for, you know, five or six, like almost six years, almost six years. Um, but the, the, Salvers were coming out in Australia. I remember in, in Australia in like 2010, maybe earlier. I haven't lived there for a while, but um, I remember, you know, we had one on draft at our at the uh, local tap house, and we sort of taste it and we're like, oh, you know. But they they get there, like they rotate. I think yeah, it's just um, a matter of people's flavors and changing the perception of like beer is not just an ale or it's not just a lager, like. There is literally a whole spectrum of, of different styles. So having them available firstly and accessible is is the number one because people will go out and try stuff. Um, it's talked about like there's a lot more information about it on the internet. There's, you know, books and you can learn a lot more. So I guess the education is another factor. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's also like the whole... Um, the whole like service industry that they'll be like oh you know I, oh, I don't like beer or I'll try it and then you've got people that go you know do you want to try this or if you like ciders or if you like sour like or a tart you know um tart you know why like wine yeah. beer, anything you know so that's the the suggestion like when people suggest or they bring it to a party or a picnic or you know those are the days I'm very, I'm, 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 I'm very generous um, when I, when I'm thinking, when I'm talking about beer, because I think I have very great experiences, and compared to people that maybe have as our first sour beer, again, fantastic beer, um, Magic Rock, Salt Keys, or Sour and Calypso, you know, fantastic beers, fantastic beer, yeah. and it's a great en entry point, it's a great getaway uh, beer, but then I remember them, the first one that I ever had, was probably similar to this. So for me, it was like a fire mark that I couldn't forget. You know, that's the, probably one of the most sour beer yeah. to produce. Everything else, it will be a matter of balance or a matter of, you know, um, 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 uh, catch up even with trends and everything. So that's why I'm like, there is, there is so much more to explore. Yeah. And also, we are at early stage. Like New Belgium saying, then we could do, we probably are into the 1% of, you know, the uh, researches within um, Sawa beers. Yeah. That's another thing that when, when you asked me to, to talk about Sours, I was like, or, or like mixed fermentation, there's, you know, there's so many like actual experts that have dedicated their whole lives to, you know, uh, the science behind it and, uh, investigating what happens with yeast and some people are still like 
we don't actually know. Like, this is kind of weird. Like, all the science supports this and then it does something else. Like, it's a, at the end of the day, they're all li living organisms and they're going to behave how they want. 100%. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry. And, you know, you can, and you can practice and you can learn, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of different... Uh, and, and Alex, the, the, the fact that you develop an interest and a, and a, and a passion for this type of products, um, it, it, are, are you into as well, as you said, cider, kombucha and, and, and cheese and, and kimchi or anything like that? Yeah, um, kimchi I have, I make quite often, uh, not as often now, I, I kind of make big portions of it and then keep it in the fridge for a uh, science magic to see that yeah. <laughs> Um Science bitch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, kimchi I love. I like fermenting stuff. I've got two kombuchas on the go. I've got probably about six liters. Um, I I drink a lot of that when I'm hungover. So before I even started this, I was like, Ugh, I'm gonna have some of this. So yeah, um, I like fermenting stuff. Like that's also come from like food and like chefing and stuff, and you kind of like explore and. You know, I'm I'm in a nice like bigger house um, now, so I can I can sort of stash things away and you know ferment stuff, and it's it's really good. I can explore a little bit. So. And would you recommend a specific place, bar, restaurant, tap room, everywhere in London to try top quality fermented beverages, especially beer if you prefer? Um, for beer, yeah, I I mean. I still, I still like the Axe. The Axe will be one of my favorite bars just because they've got a really, they've got a really good kitchen as well. So, um, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't even, I can't even like record. It's been so long since I've been to a bar. Um, yeah, I kind of, I don't know. I like cocktail bars as well. I like funky wines. Yeah. Uh, so. I also like Renegade. Everyone knows that. <laughs> and like Renegade. No, look, say about it. Please do it. Please. It's, it's my time. They've got a dry hop sparkling wine that is like, is really quite acidic. Um, it's like, it's a, you know, the wine producer, most of the wine producing community is like, what? You can't do that. And I'm like, you can. And I love it. So, um, yeah, just, you know, going to. I like to just go to people's houses to be fair and just buy some and just like have quality time. So like this is, Corona's kind of, you know, purely. Mm -hmm. And when you get the bottles, like, do you be a burger rather than Mother Cadley's rather than Clapton Crafts? Um, I, well, I kind of got most of my stuff from the, uh, from the bottle shop actually, because they had really good import. Um, the Beer Merchant's Tap is another one that has like quite a good selection, especially with the Belgian beers and um, some pretty good German ones. I know Beercraft brings over some good stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the King's Arms as well. Uh, they've got a really good selection of the bottled beers. I, uh, I mean, when I was in sales, I used to sell the, the Brooklyn like uh, specialty barrel aged uh, beers to them. The, mm. um, yeah, that's a really nice bar just to sort of sit at and it's, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it, a lot, uh, we're having in the top room a, a good selection of, of beer as well. And I haven't seen the fridge for- I'm oh, sorry, I'm just completely thrown. Yes, yes, our tap room, come and drink it. <laughs> um, our tap room does have some really nice beers. Actually, that's probably what I was doing for the past, like, however long before uh, Corona started up. Was, Don't tell me. I was drinking at the tap room and yeah, we just like sat there and like the dolphin. I went to the dolphin quite often because it's around. <laughs> Bottle think... share at the dolphin. Yeah, I mean, you sink a few pints and then you're just like, I want to dance now and play, you know, karaoke. We're off the topic of sour beers, but you know, that's that's real life. <laughs> Very true. And do you remember when, you know, like um, you <laughs> change someone's opinion about sour beer you said you did with a friend but even like when you were working in sales like have you ever managed to just convince someone just give it a little go and just be like the person yeah. like, whoa all right cool my um 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I was just reading a few comments. About the the same. There we go. <laughs> Nights at the Dolphin can be sour. That is, that's a fact. Um, yeah. Especially the, in karaoke time. It's quite, it's quite fun. Uh, I've literally forgot the question now because I'm just like reminiscing in my brain. Like, you know. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, with my friend who likes wine, especially, mm -hmm. um, I gave her a bottle of Brooklyn's uh, Kiwi's Playhouse, and it's a, yeah, it's a really, it's a really lovely beer, um, and it's a, a barrel aged with uh, kiwi fruit, so uh, the, uh, I remember giving that to her in the glass and I was like, oh, do you want to, you know, if you like, you know, Bel Air Sour, I, I'm talking about Brooklyn a lot because I used to, you know, sell their stuff. Yep. Um, I remember saying to her, uh, you know, if you like the Bel Air Sour, you should try this. And she was just like, wow. Like, she was just like, this is great. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's a really lovely feeling. Like, I, I get that with you know, with food or anything. It's like when people, I, I used to love, I, I still love like uh, bartending and having like this social interaction of like when people go in and they don't really know what they want and you give them that suggestion and you've just changed their life because they're like, oh my God, this is a whole book or a whole chapter like that I've never explored. Like, and it's, it's a really nice feeling to be like, yeah, you know. Um to someone that never had a beer before, like I never, never had a sour beer before, what would you recommend? Tomorrow, to buy, or to, or right now, what would you recommend? Um, London Field, Sour Sour. Uh, <laughs> no, there's, it depends on, um, a really kind of entry level is like, yeah, like you said, Magic Rock, uh, the Salty Kiss. Yeah. Bel Air Sour. Um, uh, yeah, we, actually, our Sabro Sour is really nice. Like, it, in all, all like funny business aside, um, it's a three and a half percent uh, dry hop sour. So it's got it's really aromatic and it's got like really kind of tropical like notes. It's coconutty and tangerine, and it's like a, it's just kind of like a like a tart. Yeah, it's really nice and like. But then refreshing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I had to try it as well. Um, uh, what I have to say to you, um, do you think then people, if there is a, um, you know, um, if, ev first question, would you recommend to every pub, to every pub in London, and maybe even like further than London, to get at least one summer beer, all on draft or in the fridge? And if I, yes, why? If not, why? For all pubs, I'm not sure that all pubs would need it, because it depends on their existing customers. Uh, got low battery. Um, the existing existing customers, uh, their target customers, and like the, the demographic of like you know who they want, like oh not who they want, but like uh who who's who's drinking what because um so yeah the answer would be no not all pubs need a sour beer mm -hmm. but. I think beer pubs are absolutely like that focus on beer. They're not just like you know, boozers. Um, if you want to do like you need, you need a standard of quality across the board. So from your, the, you know, the soy milk that you have in the back of the fridge for those customers that get coffee to the tea bags, to the, the sour beer, to every, everything that needs to be at a certain level. Like, and there are really good entry level beers that you can have that are not offensive and they're just like, yeah, here's an option. Like everyone has a, like normally everyone will have a cider. So why not, you know, have something, you should have a really broad portfolio of beer anyway, even if you don't have to have one of everything because that's mm. a specialty beer bar, yeah. you should have, um, you should definitely have options. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And do you think? Oh, it's gonna, they don't need to be like your Cantillons and Tilkins. Like they can be just Sabro or, you know, they could be. 100%. Well, 
do you think you are, we are risking to have um, <laughs> like not great quality sour if bars aren't ready yet to sell these kind of products, especially on draft? Because there is, you, you need to be more like uh, attention for these products, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to, it's difficult to sell something that people know nothing about. So again, educating your staff, number one, because they're the first point of contact with your customers. So if you don't want to do cocktails or if someone wants, you know, a margarita or something, you sort of, you just approach everything as a flavor from a flavor perspective and you can, you can sell, you can, you can sell a lot more beer and a lot, you can, you can definitely sway people like if they're you just give them little tastes you don't have to commit to like a pint or anything you just offer you're like that person bringing the sour beer to the picnic you're like yeah would you like to try this like most people are open to suggestion so mm. yeah well prices are than sour definitely but that's why you know um yeah you are looking for more in like entry point, entry level um, sours beers instead of maybe the most complex one. That's good. And do you see a coincidence why there is a bigger interest in sour beers in big cities? Again, is it anything particular in your opinion? Oh God. I... You can't go to Northampton and have a sour. You can't. You yeah. Can't. I mean, if you've got, I mean, yeah, most a lot of sours are made, especially like the the Jester King stuff, are made in a farmhouse in the countryside. You know, so they're open fermented, and like the Arizona Wilderness guys do it as well with their cool shit. So, I mean, it's not so much like p locals will drink it. Depends on you know, depends what they're used to. But I think big cities is because they people live there and they don't want to travel to these remote areas. But I mean, not all beers are made in like you know. In a barn in like you know Norway so but yeah the um it's just like it's not it, there isn't a, a strong link between the two things all right okay not that I not I I'm not like I'm not in your mind <laughs> what do you think about that Daniela's question below that can small bottle big bottle um uh you know uh depends on what your uh, equipment is because my experience in commercial breweries is it's not actually that simple to do. Like it's a big investment to have uh, packaging to package different uh, formats. So I, I would always put everything into can. Like I just, I get, I understand that bottles and you know, there's, there's a time and a place for everything, but I, I just, I really like bottle, like, sorry, cans just because they, you're gonna, you're gonna preserve it um but i mean in saying that that's just from a commercial perspective i like drinking out of bottles <laughs> i like uh sharing bottles at the table so yeah i, I, I don't know for some reason i like to show bottles if yeah. i ever have spots but cans don't know why large large like the 750s are difficult to sell especially like no one wants to take a risk on something that they haven't tried so it could be really nice to have small bottles and or, or small cans because you're able to like go further and it's a little bit less of a you know no one wants to take the leap in mm. in such like an ex or for an, such an expensive product so that makes sense and, and especially like if it has to be can it has to look good it has to be nice and yeah i mean <laughs> You know? In that, I've got like a super just craft beer from uh, from Old Street Brewery. It's a nice sour. Um, I didn't even see the full black like that. That's cool, man. It's just yeah, it's unlabeled. They're like, oh, don't drink it out of the can. <laughs> and, uh, there and we I go. <laughs> uh, uh, Alex, uh, one question that I think I ask everyone, and I really have to do it with you as well, which is very painful because. We are talking about future for London beer. What do you think? What's going to happen? If we were here in December, what would be the situation? I really hope a lot of the independent and small breweries survive. I think they're in the UK, they're in a lot better position than they are anywhere else in the world. Um, I hope that everyone has 
that has come out okay because I, I really, you know, it's pretty difficult to open a business from scratch and work your entire life for something and have, you know, mortgages on your houses and things. So everyone needs to be a little bit savvy with where they spend their money. Um, you know, you can, you, yeah, just be, you know, that would be, I'm not going to, if, if, you know, if this all blows over and everyone's, you know, comes out okay, I'm going to Australia to sit in the sun for, for Christmas. Like, but, um, but yeah, I, I would really hope that everyone survives and like, I, you know, you can't tell the, I can't tell the future. You just got to take it a kind of a day at a time. Um, and you've got to get through how you can just, just try not to be an asshole. It's not that, it's not that difficult. So. No, it's not. And well, also reach out to a lot of people, uh, at the same time, Gabs, because there's, there's a lot of people that, you know, they don't really make a song and dance when they're feeling down or just, you know, just to have a little check in with everybody. It's, um, it's quite a nice thing to do. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, again, for me, it's like, I, I really, you know, um, I really want to make sure everyone within the industry is connected and not just the industry it could be like your family, your friends or anything else. And, you know, the biggest worry is, um, pubs are not going to be open until next year. And if pubs are not going to be open until next year, we all here, me and you, plus everyone commenting or maybe following as well, are not going to meet each other as we used to do before in London. That will be, that will be very tough. And not just from a commercial point of view, from a social... Yeah, that, that would be tough. Um, I think if you worry about too many things that haven't happened yet um that is in the future and we don't we don't know so you can just kind of have like a little okay we'll get through today or we'll get through this week or we'll get through this month like um i i understand that people need to think about that those things that far into the future but right now i think everyone's got a lot on their plate and the best thing to do is just just deal with what's in front of you, what you can control and what you can manage. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of factors that, you know, that you can't control and a pandemic is one of them. So yep. the only thing that you can do is just, you know, stay home, not socialize, not like go out and have street parties, you know, just be a little bit wary. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we're, I think we'll all be okay. But yeah, you just got to take it a day at a time. Yeah, well, you know, I like to check with everyone and you seem the most concrete in, in, in the, you know, in the type of suggestion and also like in the way, in the, in the plan to follow, which is great to hear because I was lost for four weeks, completely lost. She was literally digging in the darkness. But then... I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's, you've got to channel you've got to channel your mind into something. I'm very lucky that I get to go to work and I get to you know travel to and from and have a break. Like it's I'm yeah I'm in a very I'm I'm pretty grateful for the position I'm in. So um, yeah, you've got to just kind of whether it's like reading or exercising or or anything just however cooking. Like, everybody's or cooking yeah that's i mean i've been doing a lot of that and i need to start exercising a little bit more it's just <laughs> i'm eating a lot it's great <laughs> Same. i did some i uh, have some homemade um like um i don't know even how you call it like non bread and then uh, 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 a, a cake and then some biscuits I uh, uh, I don't even have such a sweet tooth and I, I've been making like cakes and eating them because like just eating them all um, just because it's there. I'm like, okay, carrot cake, no worries. <laughs> but you, you blow my mind when you show me one thing, why garlic and cashew pesto? Oh, yeah, oh, man. That's it's right. Pesto. So like when you get taught by Italians how to make things, they're very like, yes, and this, and this is from this region and that's how it is. And then you kind of, you go, all right, so I've got the base recipe. I'm going to switch this out for something else. And then, you know, I normally make it actually with the macadamia nuts because they're, oh. 
they're over in Australia and they're really good with like rocket and things. So yeah, I like cooking with, uh, I like cooking with beer, especially I've done a, a few recipes uh, with beer, but yeah, the, the pesto was delicious. That was gifted to me by John the poacher. So thank you, John. Well, he knows what he's doing. Um, Alex, I know you are going to need some food and you're going to need as well to have a bit of relax. And we are going into the 50 minutes, if not 55, and then Instagram starts to act funny. Okay, no worries, because my battery's dying. It's ah! a warning. So it's perfectly timed. <laughs> and I, I hope to see you soon. I hope to give you a massive hug as soon as I, uh, the words will get better. And, <laughs> and, and please look after yourself. Be safe. And... <laughs> Shall we, set up, shall we say to everyone to have a great uh, bank holiday weekend, guys? Indeed, indeed. Enjoy, enjoy the sunshine and, yeah, just be safe, everyone. Be happy. Got any questions or anything, just let me know. And if you need, need me to check in on you. Yeah. She's the right person, especially because wherever, if you're going to need to, you know, um, to have a great time somewhere in a bar, have a nice chat, visiting good places. Alex is the best person you can find. I mean, that's just calm down. It's true. <laughs> Die, guys. <laughs> Die. Bye, guys. Thank you, Gabs. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>